Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules here again with another Cray Prop tutorial. In today's episode, we'll be going over the leaderboard prop. On the screen here, we have the leaderboard and its settings menu. First of all, we'll be going through the settings, and then I'll go through how you might set up your leaderboard for some different games. For starters, on the settings menu, we have the option to enable the website option. This will enable the player's score to be posted to the Cray website the leaderboard will show up next to the comments section on the game page. If we don't enable this option, the score will only be kept within the game so that when the player finishes the game they'll see the other player's scores. We also have the option to change the sorting of the leaderboard as well. We would choose this setting depending on what type of game we're trying to make, and we'll go through some example setups for each of these settings. The most important option on this settings page is the value option. Whatever value we put in here will be the score that our player receives. First of all, I'll take you through a very simple setup, and all this setup is going to do is keep track of how many times our player has clicked the mouse, and however many times they have clicked the mouse, that will be our score. So we need something to keep track of how many times the player has clicked, and for this we're going to be using a variable. I've just named this variable score. We've also got an input trigger, and this is set to detect when the player presses the attack key, which is the left mouse button. And this is going into a variable modifier to add one to our score. So we have our score stored in this variable. All we need to do with the leaderboard is grab our score value from the current port, in this case of the variable, and plug that into the value port on the leaderboard. We also need a way for our player to finish the game, so I'm just using one of the game completed props. Just something to note with this as well, the end condition for your game completed prop must be set to game completed and not game over. If you activate one of these with the game over setting, it will not post a score to the leaderboard. The player must complete the game for the score to be posted, so we need to make sure our end condition is set to game completed. So you can see we're in our test game here, and if I click the mouse a few times, you can see the score at the top of the screen there is increasing. Now that we have a score, I'll go over to the game completed condition and you can see our score is updated to 5. This is also updated on the Cray website under the leaderboard as well. We have this leaderboard set to sort by the highest score, so the higher scores will end up further up the leaderboard. Now we'll go through some examples of some games that you might have that require some different settings from your leaderboard. This game that I've made here, Critic Collection Service, has a leaderboard that's keeping track of the players that get the highest scores. This game has the exact same leaderboard setup as we showed in the previous example with the player needing to press the left mouse button to earn a score. It just has a variable keeping track of the score, and that variable is then passing the score along to the leaderboard. You can see at the top left of the screen there that our score has increased to 24 because we've earned some money from taking some customers. I've basically just got a sensor at each end of the road, and when that sensor is activated by the car, it adds a certain amount to our score. That score is then being passed into our leaderboard's value setting, and when the player's car runs out of health, I'm activating the game completed option to finish the game. For this next game, we'll be using the sorting option for the lowest score, so our players will want to get the lowest score possible to get higher on the leaderboard. In this case, we'll be counting how many times they've clicked the mouse to shoot a bullet, and basically the less bullets that you use, the better you do so the aim of this game would be to kill as many enemies as you can with the least amount of bullets. We've got our input trigger here, picking up when we've pressed the attack key, and when we have, this is increasing a counter to count how many times that we've pressed that attack key. We're then sending this value into the leaderboard, and when we activate our game completed prop, it's going to post that score to the website. So you can see we've got our score at the top there, and whenever I shoot a bullet, it increases. Now remember we want to get the lowest score possible here, so the less bullets we use the better. When we have killed all the enemies, we'll get our victory screen and if we had posted this online, we would have our leaderboard as well. It's good to note that you won't see your leaderboard in action until you've posted your game online. So we've seen a couple of score based game examples now, but what about time based scores? We'll be using an infinite timer setup here, and all we need to do to make an infinite timer is take our current time output and we're going to run that through our calculator that is adding 1 to that value. So it's going to get our current time plus 1, and then we're going to pass that result back into the target time. So you can see when we put our game in play mode, our target time will always be exactly 1 second ahead of our current time. 
so we can never run out of time for our game. All we're doing for this leaderboard setup is grabbing the current time output from our timer and plugging that directly into the value port of our leaderboard. We've got this set to slowest time, so in this instance, whoever can stay alive for the longest will do better on the scoreboard. You can see we have our timer at the top here, and when we do get hit by an object, the timer stops and our score will be posted to the website. Leaderboards also work in multiplayer games. You might recognise this as the multiplayer lobby that we set up recently in one of our tutorials, and you can now see on the left hand side that we've got a live leaderboard, displaying both myself and the guest user that I've got. For this example we'll be using a short speedrunning game, and the objective is to get the shortest time possible. So because this setup is multiplayer, we're using some multiplayer enabled props. For example we've got our selector set to multiplayer and our timer also set to multiplayer. This will mean that each player in our game will have their own copy of these props and they can have unique values. With our multiplayer selector, we have port 1 as our idle port when nothing's happening. Port 2 will be activated when the player starts the game. We're using this port 2 signal to start our timer. We're then sending the current time signal from our timer into the modification for the variable modifier. We're then sending our current time into the variable modifier to set our score variable. This variable modifier is being powered when the player finishes the game. So you can imagine our timer will start counting up when the game starts, then when the player finishes, our variable is going to get set to whatever the current time has reached. We're then resetting the timer once the game is over, and we're setting our selector back to port 1 as well, so that we can repeat this process and the player can try and improve on their score. We're then just sending that variable value into our value for our leaderboard, and this way whenever the player finishes the level, the variable will update and this will update the leaderboard. You can see that if I manage to get a score that's better than my previous score, it updates on the left hand side in the score panel. Anyway guys, that's all the examples we have for today. We had a couple of score based examples, time based examples, and a bit of a multiplayer game thrown in there as well. If you have any questions at all, definitely leave a comment down in the comment section. This has been Jimmy Jules, and I'll see you in the next one.